Good morning, everyone. God bless you all. And um, we certainly want to give honor to God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And we uh, thank God for everyone here in your presence. Um, we just want to extend a warm welcome to everyone here as we are excited about the celebration of uh, loyal, dedicated service of Lakeshore Baptist Church of 57 years. And we are also excited about the New Millennium Church of seven years of loyal, dedicated service unto the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that that deserves a great hand of praise right now. I want to acknowledge uh, Reverend Griffin, Wendell Griffin, uh, pastor of New Millennium Church, presiding pastor. I would also like to acknowledge our speaker on today, uh, uh, Dr. Higgins, Ray Higgins, sorry. Ray Higgins of the CBF of Arkansas. And I would also like to acknowledge uh, our late pastor, Bob Kessinger. Amen. Uh, uh, all of his law dedicated service to Lakeshore Drive, and not only Lakeshore, but all of the ministries that are here at this church and this building, and everyone that he has affected. Uh, so we want to remember him, be in remembrance of him as we proceed on with this service and, and, and as we go on. Amen? Amen. And, and not only that, I want to acknowledge everyone that's here. You know, we, we, you're looking real nice today. And we, I know that we're in the right spot because when God has got you here, it's good to be here. And this, Peter said the same thing to Jesus. It's good to be here. And so if you wake up with the activities of your limbs and you got your right mind, we thank God and it's good to be here and help celebrate this celebration of Lakeshore and New Millennium and the years of dedicated service unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. And with that, we want to just say thank you for your presence. And again, we welcome everyone here and God bless you all. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you on today, Lord, for all that you have done for us and how you have brought us this far. Lord, the celebration that we're here for Lakeshore Baptist Church and New Millennium, Lord, all of the years, Lord, are to give you the glory, Lord. And we thank you right now for the many blessings that you bestowed on the churches here. And now, Lord, we're just asking you to bless Lakeshore to continue on and strive on and New Millennium to continue and strive as well. And, Lord, we thank you for your many blessings that you have bestowed on each and every one of us, and we're asking you to continue to guide us. And now, Lord, we're just asking you to continue to give us a mindset to give your son Jesus the glory. And we thank you, Lord Jesus for all things. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 God bless you all as we go further in the program. God bless. Let's just celebrate the Lord.
Good morning. Good morning. Every Sunday at New Millennium, we remind ourselves why we are here. Will you please join me in stating our oneness and purpose on page six? Let us read together. We praise and worship God together. We petition God together. We proclaim God together. We welcome all persons in God's love together. We live for God in every breath and heartbeat by the power of the Holy Spirit as followers of Jesus Christ together. Amen. Scripture reading today is Luke 7, verses 11 through 17, and I'm reading from the NIV. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, don't cry. Then he went up and touched the coffin, and those carrying it stood still. He said, young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were all filled with awe and praised God. A great prophet had appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people. This news about Jesus spread through Judea and the surrounding country.
Beautiful, Cindy. Thank you. Beautiful. On this Sunday of the seventh anniversary of Lakeshore Drive Baptist Church and New Millennium Church sharing this campus, on this Sunday of the 57th anniversary of Lakeshore Drive Baptist Church, on this Sunday of the third anniversary of Bob Kessinger's ordination by this church, and on this sunny day after the service celebrating the life of Bob Kessinger, Lakeshore Drive's pastor for seven years and dedicated lay leader for over 45 years. And you do remember that the two songs we sang yesterday, his favorite songs, were Heavenly Sunlight and their sunshine in my soul. Very fitting that today is the sunny, beautiful day that God has given us. And so on this day when we when Bob joins with us from among the clouds of witnesses around us, we come together to worship God. A good and loving God, a grace giving God, a healing, redeeming, and reconciling God, a life giving God. And we gather to say that we see and we know that God is present with us and walking ahead of us, guiding us through the seasons of life, through Jesus Christ, who He raised from the dead, and the Holy Spirit, our Comforter and Counselor. Thanks be to God. Today is one of those days when the circumstances of life come together in ways that cannot be orchestrated or fully described with words. Today happens in the providence of God. And as one of my pastor friends from graduate school said to me recently, you know, Ray, I believe in God's providence. I'm just not a Calvinist about it. Today happens in the providence of God. Yesterday and today are also two of those days that put some skin on the Lord's Prayer. The chemistry of the service for Bob yesterday in the presence of four churches on this campus, Lakeshore Drive, New Millennium, a remnant of New Disciple and New Jerusalem, are a visible sign of the phrase on earth as it is in heaven. You see, Lakeshore Drive Baptist Church was formed in 1959 as a split from a Baptist church in this neighborhood led by a white, segregationist, racist pastor. The new church was called University Baptist Church. The church's progressive spirit on race relations led to progressive views on alien immersion and closed communion. With this string of progressive heresies, the church was always in trouble with the local Baptist association. It was labeled as the renegade and rebellious child. So the church changed its name in 1972. Some of those of you were here in that day. Doan, Elder, Margie Owens, Sam and Charlie Cole Chafin. You were here during those days when in 1972 the church changed its name from University Baptist to Lakeshore Drive Baptist Church. But the change in the name didn't change its progressive spirit. This church added progressive ideas about hospitality toward and social ministry with persons on the margins of our community. People who didn't measure up to the biblical standards of the more theologically orthodox and culturally homogenous churches. And that led to welcoming and not disqualifying, including ministers who were divorced. And that led to progressive ideas about women in church and society and ordaining women as deacons and ministers. And so during these 46 years of the 57 years of Lakeshore Drive's history, Bob was a key leader in this church. He was a deacon, a 
teacher, a treasurer, a committee chairperson, a groundskeeper, a handyman, a visitor to homes and hospitals and nursing homes, a practical helper to anyone who needed help, and finally stepping humbly and naturally into the role as pastor at the age of 77 and being ordained to the ministry at the age of 81 three years ago today. And all of that has set the stage for a meeting seven years ago on Monday evening, May the 4th, 2009. A meeting with Bob and members of Lakeshore Drive Baptist Church. Cindy and Dawn were in the meeting. Wendell and Pat Griffin and members of New Millennium Church were in the meeting. And that meeting led to this Sunday, seven years ago, when Lakeshore Drive a mostly white church with a 50-year history. Welcome New Millennium Church, a brand new, mostly African-American church, onto its campus as a full partner. Two churches, two worships, two Bible studies, two identities, histories, and ministries in diversity, unity. One Lord, one faith, on baptism. And during these seven years, we have witnessed Reverend Kessinger and Reverend Griffin form bonds as pastors, colleagues, friends, brothers in Christ, who have led their churches to form that bond and to welcome other churches to share this campus and be the body of Christ in this place. On earth, as it is in heaven. And this story, these events, bring us to the lectionary passages for today. A passage that Jordan read to us from Luke 7, a passage from 1 Kings 17, both about themes that are embedded and embodied in our worship today, themes of life and death, and life again. Luke 17 tells the story about Jesus going to the town of Nain, a village, a small village in Galilee. His disciples and a large crowd are with him. And as he approaches the town gate, he walks into a funeral possession. The deceased, the only son of his mother, who is a widow, is being carried out of the town. With her is a large crowd of family and friends. When Jesus sees her, his heart goes out to her, and he tells her not to cry. He approaches the coffin as the pallbearer stands still, and he touches it, and he says, Young man, get up. And the dead man sits up and begins talking. And Jesus tells the pallbearers to give him back to his mother. In 1 Kings, Chapter 17, we read about a very poor widow and her son in the town of Zarephath. The Lord tells the prophet Elijah to go and live in this town of Zarephath during what would be a three-and-a-half-year-long famine in Israel. The Lord tells Elijah to look for a widow and ask for her food. And the Lord tells the widow to share her food with the prophet. With only a handful of flour in a jug and only a little oil, she takes him into her home and feeds the three of them through the famine. The Lord always provides. One day this widow's son becomes ill and he stops breathing. Elijah tells her to give me your son. He takes him from her arms and carries him up to the upper room where he is staying, and he lays him out on the bed. Elijah cries out to the Lord, asking God if God brought this tragedy on the widow by causing her son to die. And then he stretches himself out on the boy. Three times he stretches himself out and cries, Lord, let this boy's life return to him. And the scripture says the Lord heard Elijah's cry and the boy's life returned to him and he lived. 
Elijah picks up the child, carries him down from the upper room into the house, gives him to his mother and says, Look here, your son is alive. These two stories on this Sunday, coincidence, lectionarial coincidence, no providence. God always has a word and a real world story for our circumstances. Seven weeks ago, Bob was diagnosed with cancer, acute myeloid leukemia. Did God notice? Did you, did we not cry? Did you, did we not cry out to God for His healing? And yet on Monday, on Memorial Day, Bob died. Did God really bring the widow of Zarephath's son back to life and the widow of Nain's son too? I believe he did. God heals. God brings people back to life. Do we always understand? No. Can we ever fully explain it? No. Does that mean that God doesn't do it? No. Did the widow of Zarephath's son eventually die? Yes. And the widow of Nain's son? Yes. So these stories don't teach us that God heals us from physical diseases so that we will never die. Instead, they show us a God who is the creator and author of life, who has the power over sickness and death, and who through Jesus raises us when we die to eternal life. The miracle is that while we are outwardly wasting away, inwardly we are being renewed every day. The miracle is that our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. The miracle is that when the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house made in heaven and not by human hands. The miracle is that when we are absent from the body, we are present from the Lord, with the Lord. Bob gave us his answer in his last sermon, which he preached April the 17th on Psalm 23. His last words in that last sermon were so, where do I go from here? Same way I've been going for the last 84 years. I'll follow the shepherd and see where he takes me. That's a lesson about true faith in real life. The third lectionary passage for today is Galatians 1, 11 through 24. And in Galatians 1, we read the account of Paul telling the church in Galatia about his life story. He tells us about his life in Judaism how proud he was that he advanced faster than all of the other students, that he intensely persecuted Christians and tried to destroy the church because he was the most zealous for the traditions of the fathers. And then he tells us what God did for him. God set him apart from birth, called him by grace, and revealed Jesus to him so that he might be freed from his traditions to love the Gentiles and share the gospel, the good news, with them. I can't help but think now of Bob as I read this passage. Bob didn't have any seminary training like Paul did, nor did he have the arrogance that Paul had. But Bob was always a leader in the church. Pleasant Grove Baptist in Conway and Lakeshore Drive in Little Rock. And Bob was able to overcome the traditions of the fathers in Baptist life and march to the beat of a different drummer and take a road less traveled and be a servant leader that brought together the people of God, the body of Christ, regardless of the color of our skin or our stations in life. The world so desperately needs Christians and churches to show them that being a follower of Jesus is always about being a reconciler and never, ever about being a persecutor. 
in Psalm 146. A psalm of praise to God. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. It's a psalm about trusting God more than we trust human leaders who cannot save us. It's a psalm about being blessed when your help and your hope are in the God of Jacob, the maker of heaven and earth, the seas and everything in them. It's a psalm that describes this God as the one who remains faithful, who, listen, listen, upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry, who sets the prisoner free, who gives sight to the blind, who lifts up those who are bowed down and loves the righteous, who watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but is frustrated with the ways of the wicked, who reigns forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Psalm 146 describes the identities and the missions of Lakeshore Drive and New Millennium. Because every society seems to structure its life to the advantage of the advantaged, to the priorities of the majority, God is the one who is on the side of the disadvantaged. God is the friend of and the advocate for the oppressed, the hungry, the prisoner, the bowed down, the alien, the orphan, and the widow. And God is the one who calls us to join Him in welcoming those who are on the margins, who live at a disadvantage, who are excluded, neglected, rejected, and labeled. Today begins a new season in the stories of Lakeshore Drive Baptist Church and New Millennium Church and other churches that share and may share this campus in the future. With this blessed seven-year history, God has already provided what you need for your journey, just like God did for the widow of Zarephath her son and the prophet of Elijah, with a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. Thank you, Pastor Griffin, whom I now respectfully refer to as the Honorable Reverend Dr. Wendell Griffin. <laughs> you, know, you know that last month he gave the commencement address at Central Baptist Seminary, Theological Seminary, in Kansas City, where Dr. Molly Marshall is the president. He gave the commencement address there and brought the house down, the full house down, and that he was awarded the Doctor of Divinity degree by Central Baptist Theological Seminary. The Honorable Reverend Dr. Wendell Griffin. Thank you for your vision in forming New Millennium Church and for the ways that you and Bob and Lakeshore Drive came together, worked together, served together through these years. God will bless and guide your leadership in these churches going forward. CBF, the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, is grateful to be a partner with you. And I believe it is providential that our moderator this year for CBF Arkansas is Dr. Pat Griffin. We are in this kingdom business of being the presence of Christ in the world together. And God will continue to lead you, lead us forward and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.